it's nice to be here. I would like to thank Shubishu for inviting me to be a speaker here. And uh, I know many of you, you know, <coughs> might be wondering why am I invited here at this conclave of the big, you know, businessmen, bankers, you know, and people uh, from, you know, different uh, field of expertise, especially <coughs> in the field of, you know, technology, communication technology. So I just would like to, you know, tell, okay, what is, okay. Okay, I just would like to tell that many of you know me because of some of these pictures I am going to show. Okay? So this is the one, this is the computer I built before, you know, 2000, in late 1900s, 1990s, when I was living in the villages and, you know, we had no ways to bring computers, so we built this one. And somehow BBC found about this and, you know, they, they published this news in their, you know, uh, news. So then in late, in early, in early 2000, what I did is using this simple indoor device, I became able to build, you know, long range wireless network. That was, you know, almost 40 kilometers. I can challenge you to try this. If you want to try, you can try with this in small indoor router that has, you know, just 6 milliwatt, 60 milliwatt, you know, transmit power. How that was possible to connect this long range wireless network? You know, so let me show some of these pictures. This is how, how we did. Using that small indoor router and using the setup like this, you know, we became able to make a, you know, long range wireless network. This is how, this is why, you know, many of you know what I am doing and who am I. So then we started building wireless networks in many of these, you know, remote areas. And now we have connected about, you know, 200, more than 200 villages in remote, very remote parts of Nepal to the internet. But, you know, I got, I get the internet bandwidth from the ISPs like Subbishu, World Links, and other, you know, uh, you know, ISPs. And now I have, uh, uh, you know, I have my own ISPs also, what I call Nepal Wireless. It is another big ISP like Subbishu, but it is a rural ISP. It is rural ISP license provided by Nepal Telecommunication Authority but we are not commercial ISP. Because I work mostly in the remote areas where commercial ISPs like you, for you, it is difficult to reach. And I enjoy working in difficult, difficult environment. So because of what I did in the mountain, in the communities, I got many international awards and recognitions you can see that, those awards and the recognition, I didn't ask them to give it, give it to me, they just provided it to me. So, but now, those international awards and the national awards are now an auction to generate money. If you are interested, you are welcome to buy. Okay, it is an auction. So, why? Why I am doing this? Why I, why, why I am putting those medals that I got in auctions? Because I learned the most important lesson in 25 years. It has been almost 30 years I have been working in the rural areas, trying to do different things, and trying to bring internet in the schools, in the communities, trying to teach people how to use you know, computers, how to use the internet for education, for health, for e-commerce purpose. So all I 
doing this, I learned one most important lesson in 25 years, which is social work and community development work is needed to make communities better, but it is not enough for making a poor country like Nepal economically prosperous nation. We need to do more. I'm mean, still doing it. I'm mean, still bringing internet in the rural areas, helping people to learn computers, use, you know, use it. So in 25 years, what I learned is Nepal is economically poor. Why? It's because Nepal never had and it still does not have the culture of innovation. That's what I learned. And Nepal is too miser to spend money for helping people to do research and innovation. That's why Nepal is poor. That's what I learned in 25 years. And Nepal never tried to capitalize and commercialize the innovative ideas of the most innovative and talented people. Nepal never tried to keep them here for the economic development of Nepal. That's why Nepal is poor. And Nepal never learned. We as Nepalese never learned that. You know, innovation is the growth engine for the economic development. That's why we are poor. And this is another fact. Because of that, because we never learn the importance of research and innovation, what is happening is we have a huge trade deficit. Around 92 to 94 percent of goods we use here in Nepal, everything we import, we export only 7, 8 percent of the goods. With this huge trade deficit, how can Nepal become a developed country? That's what I learned in 25, 25 years. That's why we have started now, I'm working now very you know, hard to establish and run a national innovation center to you know, utilize the human capital, the ca talented human capital here for the economic development of Nepal. So what we do at the center is we try to encourage people to come up with innovative ideas. Those ideas that can be commercialized. Those ideas that can help to create job opportunities for the people. So what do we do? We provide financial support, we provide mentoring, we provide them space, and once they become you know, successful, we try to connect them to the investors. So this is what we are doing. So just to let you know what we are doing, there are several things we are working on. There are about 12, 13 projects people are working, and there are more projects in pipes. For example, they are developing an you know, alternative animal you know, feed. The university students are doing that in, in Chitavan. And they are working to design and develop air-conditioned suit. I don't know how, why, why we need air-conditioned suit. This, is, this should be good for the workers working in, Nepali workers working in, in urban countries. You know, they are trying to improve the efficiency of the existing solar thermal heater. They are working on it. They have already developed the prototype and they are developing the product. You know, they are developing a compact system of water filter and a treatment you know, system for the rural, rural villages because nowhere in the rural areas of Nepal people get to drink treated water. You know, there are several things. They are even working on, and they have developed an you know, online shopping store, averagecart.com. They are developing, you know, functional food, biopesticide, organic hair, dry, dye, etc. So they are doing different things. We are de de developing electronic, electronic medical recording systems. You know, they are developing web-based application to manage the school, school management system. And they're trying to develop all train vehicles that, that can go in the mountain roads also. And we are also working on developing electric car, electric vehicles here. Rice harvesters, 
you know, drones, what we call medical drones to deliver medicine in the remote villages of Nepal using the drone. And they are developing, you know, monkey chasing device or wild animal chasing devices. So there are different things we are doing and there are more things uh, we are trying to do. So what I will do is I will leave this leaflet of National Innovation Center outside in the table and the things that we are working, different projects we are working and we are planning to work because we get ideas every day. Every day there are people bringing ideas. Okay, I have these ideas, how can we do? So we let them do it. What do we say? Okay, whatever you want, we will provide. You provide, you want money, you need money, we provide. How much money we can provide? As much as you need. So for this pro some of these products, projects that I showed you, we have been providing some people 10 lakh rupees, 12 lakh rupees, five, six, seven lakh rupees, three, four lakh rupees. We are providing them money, but money cannot do anything, everything. So we need to provide them space. We need to provide them tools. We say, whatever, you, whatever tools you need, you know, less machine, milling machine, you know, and um, like a laser cutter, CNC machine, tools, equipments, whatever you need, we provide. 3D printing, we provide the space, tools, money, and encourage them to do something. That's what we're doing at the Innovation Center, and we, you are welcome to involve in it. Just to show you some of these pictures, if you are interested, you can come to see what we are doing at this research lab. It doesn't, it doesn't look like a research lab, but this is what we have now in Kirtipur at the premise of the innovation, at the premise of the Tribune University. There are things going on like this. So, how it is funded? It is totally funded by public. People from, you know, communities, they are providing it. Mostly our donors are farmers, low-income, middle-income people, laborers, students, and teachers. I would like to encourage big business houses to involve in it also, if you are interested. And we are trying to make it sustainable as soon as possible, and our target is to make it fully sustainable within 10 years. That's what we are doing. Because we don't, we don't want to rely on the money contrib contributed by the people. So what are we are doing for the sustainability? We're trying to develop a drink, ginger drink, soft drink, and sell it. We're trying to develop, we're, you know, actually we are starting a software company also. Not for innovation, but to generate money. And we are considering to invest on tourism industries also in Nepal because that has big potential. We're trying to find ways to, you know, produce export quality Himalayan mineral water. And we're trying to develop a 10 megawatt hydropower stations that can generate money. So these are some of the ideas we're working on. So how can you be involved with it? I say there are three ways you can be involved with Innovation Center. First, the most important thing we are requesting people to contribute is the ideas. Because it is the idea that is the most valuable input you can bring for the innovation center, to run this innovation center, manage this innovation center, to make it sustainable, we need ideas. To mentor the innovative people, we need ideas. So that's the most important contribution you can ever make for this innovation center, then you can become a men mentor, you can contribute some money if you have, you know, if you don't have money, you don't have to contribute, and uh, we are asking for just one-time contribution. We are not asking people to donate second time, contribute second time. So you have only one chance to contribute money, okay? Then 
you can contribute your time, your time to mentor our people, your time to spread the word, the importance of innovation center. And at the end, you can become an investor also. Because I am very much hopeful, I am very much confident that maybe within the next two or three years, there will be at least several products that will be developed at the innovation center, and we need investors to commercialize those products. So you can help as an investor as well. That's what we are doing. Why we are doing this? Because just the political freedom for a country is not enough to make people's life better and happier. Political freedom is important, it is needed. But that is not enough. That is what is not going to make people's lives happier and better. We need to create freedom of job opportunities in Nepal, which does not exist here, I would say. So let's use, let's get together and work to make Nepal a prosperous nation. Of course, we can make Nepal a prosperous nation. Nation, it will take time, but we can do it. So this is a Chinese proverb: "Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. He's a man to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime." That's why. What I see mostly the bankers and the businessmen and the people with money, what they are doing is they are like giving men a fish to eat. I have seen that very clearly. Many companies, they are doing CSR to feed by giving a fish to eat them. That's okay, that's important, that's needed. But you need to also teach a man to fish, how to fish, so that he can feed him for a lifetime. That's what I want to encourage. It's up on you to decide what you would like to do. Thank you very much. And you can contact me anytime I'm available. That's my mobile number. I don't have any landline, you know. That's my email, and I'm always available. Thank you very much.